Uh, installing and running PackageQ is really simple. You just go to uh, our, our GitHub web page, download either the source package or the pre-compiled binary for Mac OS if you have a Mac, and uh, just go from there. So we're going to start by uh, uh, going to our web page, github.com slash dot slash packet queue. Here we have a download button. And you, can, you can either select the pre-compiled package, Mac OS binary here, which should contain the latest version, or you can download the zip or the tar file uh, for compiling. And compiling it is really easy, just type configure make uh, make install and you, you should have it installed on your PC really quickly. So uh, I've already downloading it, downloaded it on this, this machine and it's compiled so we're going to start by running, um, running a query here. Uh, the, the first query I want to just show you is uh, how quick it is. So I have a, a small uh, file here with pre-written pre queries and I'm going to use the first one here. Uh, you can see here you, you start by typing, typing packet queue, as, and this is one of the options for running packet queue using the command line interface. Packet queue is the utility, dot s is then you type in the query, and then you specify the file or the files that you want to, uh, that you want to, to make the query on. And we at this point have, uh, we have uh, five minute files on one of our name servers that I'm going to use as a demo. Um, so, and the query I made is basically select count star from DNS. And uh, it shows, will, will show you the number of packets. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here. And it outputs a JSON file uh, with, with the, you can see here, the number of packets, which is 96,000 packets. Uh, if I use the command time here before, you can actually see how quick it is. And now I actually also used a bigger file. So this is actually 45 minutes later. You can see here that the file has grown a bit. We went from 96,000 to 799, almost 800,000 queries. And the reason it grew uh, a lot is because we had um, an attack at this point. So two, two seconds to dig through a file containing more than 800,000 packets is really, really quite impressive. So I'm going to go to the next file here. Uh, I can also mention that running it on a server at uh, any size will probably increase the runtime a lot due to the amount of CPU and disk you have compared to, to this MacBook that I'm doing the recording on now. Uh, the next query I'm going to run is actually a query that uh, a bit more complex. We're using a function called rsplit to split the queue name. The queue name is the query that uh, the, the server does. And we're going to split it um, into two parts based on the dot. So what I'm looking for here is, is a top list. You can see I'm count star. Uh, I'm counting the number of packets. But I'm grouping, on, I'm grouping on the word domain. Domain is defined as uh, this R split, which has take, actually takes the the first one, .s in this case, and the second part of the queue name. So you get, uh, this is basically the domain name that's queried. So if you, for example, would query for uh, www.google.com, this would output google.com. So let's run this query. And, and you can also see, uh, finally, order by count. And desk means that you actually order with the highest value first. So this will actually output the top list. Limit 10 means that we only up output the top 10. So I'm going to run this. I'm running it on the, on the file 745, which contains out 800,000 packages. You can see that now that we actually increased the time from 2 seconds to about 5 seconds. And the reason for that is that this query requires a bit of more processing power because we sort and we group and we do a bit of other stuff. But uh, still, five seconds to, to process a PK file of this, this size is pretty impressive. So the first domain that, that's queried the most is pp.se, which is a subdomain. The second one is netno.se, and then we have .se itself, and the domain network and so on. Um, so this gives you a simple top list, and you can edit this query as you would like. So let's uh, move on. 
uh, we have the sample keyword. So if you have, if you type sample 100 in this case, and then colon, you tell Packet Queue to do the, exactly the same query, but you do it over. Uh, you, you actually only extract it the, every 100 packets. So let's do this, and you can see that it's much more. It's much quicker, and by actually. Uh, Multiplying by 100 on the count value here, you get more or less the same top list. So this wasn't uh, the best example of doing a top list, but if you have a file that contains a couple of million packets or something, doing the sampling will increase the, the time a lot. OK. If you remove the split function, so in this case, we're only using QName as domain here. Uh, you will have the, the query itself. So at this point, we can see that uh, .sc is uh, queried the most. Um, slave, Stockholm, NetNodeSC, and so on. So you get a top list of the exact of the exact queue name. And you can see that I'm back on the seven o'clock file here. So the uh, the amount of data is much less, and it takes quicker to process. Uh, the same query, but instead of doing on queue name, we're using um, uh, source and destination address. And on this query, we have uh, we're using the QR tag, QR flag, to actually uh, decide if we want to show the destination address or the source address as source. And the reason for this is that if you are processing queries that are coming into the server. You want, to you want to show the source address. But if you're showing queries, if you're looking at packets coming from the, the name server, you want to list the destination address to get the, the resolver. So in this case, we're going to run this query, and you get a top list of the 10, the 15, um, the, the, the servers doing, um, the top 15 servers doing queries to our this name server. And you can also note here, if you look on this, that we do IPv6 processing on the fly as well. It's built in uh, natively in the, in, the, in the application. We can mix these two into one query. You can see that we use queue name and the source and destination uh, address query. And now we have um, a query that will actually show you a list of servers that are repeating a query. So you can see that this server actually are sending 607 questions regarding .sc. And this more or less will show you a list of broken resolvers that for some reason are querying, uh, doing the same query over and over again. You can select um, uh, queue type, so that you will see uh, what type of packets, that, what type of questions that are sent. And you can see that we're using the name function here. The name function we're using the the header queue type, but we are using uh, we're telling the name function that this is a queue type. Um, we're counting on this as well, and we're grouping by queue type and ordering by the count. And this will actually show you show us efficiently a top list of what queue types are 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 made from um, towards the server. And you can see that the top here is A queries. Then we have quad A and then MX. If we're doing this exactly the same query on uh, a file that is a bit later on when we have the when we had the packet flood, you can see that at this point it takes a bit longer to do the query, but we have um, a lot more MX type. You have 714,000 MX queries. So we can assume that the MX, the, the flood, packet flood was based mainly on MX queries. Uh, we can do a, a, a lot more complex queries. Um, they usually don't take that much time, but gives you much more data. In this case, we want to do a query that we can use uh, more for graphing. So if you want to, for example, if you have a couple of pickup files that you want to show a graph on, um, you, uh, you, can actually, uh, you, can actually, uh, you can actually truncate on 
on the time to, uh, to actually get uh, a list for a specific time period. Uh, we use a truncate keyword here and uh, we're using S which is the timestamp and we're dividing it by 10. And that means that we will actually sum up statistics for every 10 second period. So for a five minute um, file, it will actually show you uh, output every, every 10 seconds. So to start on, we're showing the timestamp, which is the first timestamp in, uh, in the file. Then we're counting it and we're dividing it by 10 because we're uh, showing, you want, we want to show the number of queries per second. So because we're doing it for a 10 second period, we want to divide it by 10. So we're getting, um, we're getting the, the, the average over a 10 second period. Uh, then we have a, qu a query here where we actually take the, we, we're checking if the R code is zero and the answer count is zero. That means that you actually are, you're sending back, you have a question that is sent back as a referral. And then we're using the sum keyword here to, uh, to basically count how many of those are actually uh, identified during this 10 second period. Uh, this one is called NX domain and we're, where the R code is free, it should be NX domain. Uh, if the R code is zero and the answer count is more than uh, zero, you have a success. So that means if someone is querying for an NS record for the SE or a SOA record for the SE and so on. Uh, we have a few more uh, recursion. Uh, we can check for IPv6 packets, TCP packets, and so on. So I'm doing it. I'm doing this, and I'm showing eight because I have the limit keyword eight here. I'm going to only show the first eight, ten-second periods here. So let's run it. And you can see here uh, that you have 09, 19, and so on. So this is actually ten-second periods. The first one is a total. And you can see that it, it's actually increasing 820 queries per second, 1100 queries per second, and so on. So it's increasing. So what we're seeing now is the start of the packet flood. The second, uh, the second query here, which is actually referrals, you can see here the second line here, 304, 330, 319, is actually pretty much uh, holding still. And it, this means that basically when the packet flood is sta starting, we're seeing the number of uh, packets increasing, but the amount of referrals are staying pretty static. And that means that the majority of, of uh, questions would be NX domain. So let's check the second column, and you can see here that when we start, we have 505 queries per second, that's NX domain. And as we move on, NX domain is increasing. So at the end of this, of this um, uh, minute period here, we have almost 2,000 queries per second, that's NX domain. And you can see here uh, the number of uh, TCP packets and the number of IPv6 packets. So this is really, in, you can actually output this query with, uh, uh, as a CVS file and you can port it into Excel or any graphing tool and you will get a nice graph. So, uh, the last uh, query I want to show you is uh, using a function called standard deviation on the source port. Um, we are actually we can we can actually check for um, resolvers uh, that are not that doesn't have any standard deviation on on the source port, and this is an, an indication that they, they are not randomizing the source port. Uh, I'm using a filter here that says that if they have number of queries is more than a hundred, so they are quite big resolver and they have a standard deviation of less than 100, then, uh, then this is something we should, we should look into. So let's run this query and see what happens. So you can see here that we have a couple of resolvers here that have standard deviation, the source port is zero. And uh, having it in zero means that they are not randomizing the source port at all. And we can see here we have one, one here that could be interesting. Uh, let's do a dig on that and see who it is. It's actually a resolver at uh, high 3G access in here, a big 
telecom operator here in Stockholm that they are not randomizing their source port and they might be vulnerable to the Kavinsky attack. So, uh, so this sum sums up more or less the, the session of the command line interface. And uh, the next thing I want to do here is to show you uh, the GUI application. Okay, so we're going to start looking at the built-in web server of uh, Packet Queue and, and what you can do with it. So to start on up the web server, you go to type in Packet Queue and dot p. Uh, you type in what port number you want the, the web server to run on. Dot w uh, the the directory with the HTML uh, files, the, the static HTML files, and I'm pointing it to HTML. Uh, which contains the, the, the prototype uh, GUI application that we wrote. Dot R, you point to the, the PCAP files. So I have a, a directory here with, with PCAP files. And um, the packet queue will actually uh, would provide uh, the GUI application uh, a, a JSON API to actually browse this directly directory and, uh, and uh, allow you to do queries on it. And you press enter and it says listening on port 8080. So I'm using my Firefox browser here and typing uh, uh, 127001 uh, colon 8080. And you can see that the web server is answering fine and, and I have my GUI here. Uh, all these, uh, everything you see here is actually uh, uh, defined by lo uh, static JSON files that you can edit. So for example, the, the servers here, you can see this as local now, but you can actually edit this file and input servers so that you, can, you can actually deploy this in remote locations and you can access your servers from a central, P, a central, a central uh, management PC. There's even a proxy script that you can use so uh, you can actually go through one server and use the GUI application on the monitoring, uh, on monitoring server and so on. Uh, the second one here is with, with all the questions you can you can run. The the the, the, the basic this is basically queries like top domains, top resolvers that we did previously, but they are actually defined in the JSON file, and you get the output here in the GUI instead. So we can actually start by looking at one of these queries, uh, top domains here, and I'm going to select one of the files. You can see it says has uh, 07 here, and this is a. Uh, a directory containing the 07 files and the same that I've used that I actually ran my query on uh, just now. And I'm clicking run question here. And you can see that I quickly get the, the same top list here, netnode.se uh, and so on, as I got previously when I ran, ran the question in, in my, in my uh, CLI. And I can move this around and I can actually select another file here and, and run. Uh, that the same query on that and see uh, does it differ anything is the number of queries for the domain name difference and so on. Uh, I can do the same I can run top resolvers uh, I can even run it on multiple uh, multiple uh, files so just click them in and you can see that I have now the, the number of resolvers here you can see the IPv6 is outputted as well um, so I'm just going to close this and I'm going to show the graphing support. So uh, this was actually an output in a list, but we also have graphing support. You select view graphs uh, and this in the configuration file is actually selected that output should be graphs. And I'm actually going to select uh, a couple of uh, files here. Uh, and this actually instructs packet queue to, to uh, use these files run uh, the, the same query basically as I did previously where I actually truncate on a 10 second interval but I'm going to show it as a graph instead. And the files I've selected here is actually the, the, the start of the packet flood. So you can see here that there's more, here's more or less the normal load with 300 queries per second but then as, as the packet uh, flood initiates you can see that it actually grows up to a uh, couple of thousand, three thousand queries per second. The GUI application is, is kind of rough at this moment, uh, so uh, if you, you will probably find a more updated version that uh, contains more features and is better looking if you download it from GitHub. So this basically concludes my presentation of Packet Queue.
uh, at this point. I hope you uh, enjoy using it and find, uh, and find uh, new ways of implementing this into your infrastructure. Uh, we also have uh, a mailing list that you can subscribe on and uh, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.